Hi, this is Gavin from Manchester Video. I'm going to run quickly through how we got the Mevo camera to work inside OBS. Now, it's worth pointing out the Mevo is a great little hobby camera. Um, it's useful. We've used it on jobs for ourselves, for internal stuff that we've recorded for ourselves. We wouldn't necessarily deploy it on, on a commercial job. But as a curiosity, as something that, that we're interested in, you know, we, we do this for a living, but we actually enjoy it as well. Um, we find the, the, the Mevo camera quite an interesting little device. And what we've done with the latest update, uh, as of September 2018, you can now stream from the Mevo to any RTMP destination. So that means you can stream to places like Restream IO or directly to a Facebook event or a YouTube pre preset event rather than just using the go live options, which is quite useful, um, particularly if you've got your own CDN like Decast that you use or or another endpoint that you that you want to use. But what we've done, we've set up a local RTMP server. The one we're using is called Mist and the website I will look up, just to give them a mention, is, bear with me, mistserver.org, and they've got uh, a few versions, a few commercial versions, but for um, enthusiast use, there's a free, um, free license that you can use, and that's one we've tried, uh, just to have a play with it. Uh, so, it's a bit tricky to set up. I've done a blog post about it. Uh, if you search for um, Mist server with Mevo camera, um, hopefully our blog will come up. Um, but what we've done is, there we go, email. What we've done is stream from the Mevo locally via RTMP to the Mist server. The Mist server then gives us a URL. Now we can put that URL into a browser and we can so we, HTML5 browser, we can see it in the browser. But what we do is we put that URL into um, OBS as a VLC source. So you add a VLC source in OBS, choose URL for that option, paste in the, the URL option, which is a local URL, um, it's a local host address. That then brings the picture from the Mevo, albeit with a delay, and the delay is quite significant, into OBS. Once it's in there, I'll just turn this, uh, this graphic off. Um, once it's inside OBS, you've then got controls of um, the Mevo. So you're still in the Mevo app, the Mevo works in the normal way, so if you switch, switch views inside the Mevo, um, switch to the close camera, switch to the shot of the Mevo itself, um, or maybe then switch back to the wide shot. Everything works as you expect it to inside the Mevo app. As far as the Mevo's concerned, if I switch back to this, Mevo's working in the normal way, but it's actually streaming via RTMP. So we can use the Mevo ordinarily like we normally would, but instead of the feed going out to a website, Facebook, YouTube, or Restream.io, or Decast, or whoever else you use as an endpoint, or Vimeo even, it goes into, locally, OBS. So it's going via a local RTMP server, getting picked up by OBS. Once it's inside OBS, you've then got the option to add graphics. You've got to bear in mind there's a delay, so, Everything I do on the computer, so if I bring a graphic up, it'll take a little while for it to appear. So I've got two scenes, a clean one and one with the graphic on it. Um, I could have just turned the logo on and off on the same scene, but what I'm going to hit the, hit the button now to switch to the scene with the graphic on. It's the same scene, it's the same input, but it's just got a graphic on it. So I'll hit that now. The graphic came up straight away but the audio is significantly behind. So, so, or the Mevo feed is significantly behind. So you've got to bear that in mind. So 
any switching that you do and just to give you an idea if I'm on the wide shot um, if I can turn this little Mevo camera around a bit there we go uh, give it a little stick it around there there we go so we can see OBS is here um, if I switch away so I'm going to tap the Mevo now to go to the close-up shot of the Mevo um, OBS has reacted now so that's a couple of seconds uh, it took a couple of seconds for the Mevo to uh, to catch up with that and if I switch back to the wide if you watch on the shot on OBS on there uh, you can just see it in the corner of the screen once I switch to the wide I'm going to tap it now it switched to the wide inside the Mevo but OBS has just caught up with it so you can see there in the corner of the screen uh, there you go OBS has just caught up so there is a delay it's not the perfect solution I'll just turn this thing back around again um, there we go it's all right it's, it's good and I haven't seen any dropout um, the the network that I tried it on previously I did a little test at home um, it was just a, a household sort of whatever the BT Wi-Fi gave us it's not the best the server in the office is a little bit beefier or that rather the um, the router we've got a 16 port switch but we've got a router that's got a decent amount of RAM in it um, and it's, it's quite a fast little thing so that's been cleaner we haven't seen any dropout we did see a little bit of dropout and a bit of instability on the on the one that I tested at home but on this one I'm fairly confident that um, it makes the Mevo that little bit more usable I'll turn the graphic off um, it is useful I like it it's, it's a good bit of fun um, just out of interest this Mevo set at ISO 400 30th of a second um, even though we're in the UK we've got high frequency fluorescence so we're okay for flicker we don't don't have mains flicker from that one um, so yeah this Mevo set to manual um, it's not particularly well lit down here in this bottom corner of the office but um, but the Mevo does okay for what it is which I'd consider it to be a hobby cam I think it's fine I wouldn't put it on a paying job we've used it for our own things for internal things um, but and, and it's fine for that we haven't had any problems any issues we've not had to you know let anyone down it's not let us down it's been fine in, in what it is um, what it isn't we don't think is a commercial viable proposition if you were charging money for it if you're a church hall something like that and you want to do your services or you're a community group where you don't need a big skill set or you don't want somebody with a big skill set to be able to operate it then I think the Mevo provides a great solution um, for that but I know that some people have struggled I've looked at the forums there seems to be a lot of issues some of its network issues some of its connectivity which you're going to get with any streaming environment we've been to jobs where uh, we promised very very fast internet when we get there it isn't it's not what it seems it's one person's definition of fast isn't the same as somebody else's and although you might be on a, a decent fiber connection as I was at home the connection at home is a very very fast fiber connection uh, for the UK anyway it's, it's fast by UK standards um, the the layout of the network and the resilience of the router it's just a BT Wi-Fi router the free BT home hub not great hopefully this one in the office a bit more resilient wasn't terribly expensive it's just a half decent router um, it's capable of maintaining and sustaining the data rates that we need to move video around the network without being impeded too much so uh, we get better results in here or certainly from what I've seen um, everything's a bit better um, going in the office what you do have to bear in mind and, and it's worth pointing this out is that what the Mevo sending is 4 megabits a second or thereabouts 720p in my case because I've got it set to 720 so it's, send, it's already compressing it 
H264 and pulling that round the network. When you bring that footage into OBS, it's already been compressed. So it's been through the switching process. It's already been compressed. You're gonna do things like add graphics to it and because of the delay when I press this, the, the graphics come up. But I might have said it before or after it actually happened <laughs> because OBS is quicker than, than what the Mevo is. When I do things in OBS, it happens straight away, but it takes two seconds or so for the picture to reach OBS. So anything you want to do post sort of after it gets into OBS, you're already applying that to footage that's been previously compressed. So it's not going to be as clean as going straight from the Mevo. So the Mevo would send a nice clean 4 megabit per second feed, whether that's to YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Um, but what you get is that 4 megabits per second already compressed version of the Mevo's output into your streaming software and you then need you either record it or you stream it so you're streaming that again so you've got the if you stream at four megabits you've got four megabits going out but that is compressed footage decompressed and then recompressed again so there's double compression going on plus the delays and that kind of things it's, it's not for everyone but if you're producing stuff uh, for yourself or locally as a hobby you may be a vlogger or something like that and you're quite happy to work within the limitations of that and understand what that means it's fine it's absolutely great so and you've also got to deal with that delay so what I've got to remember to do is um, wait until the footage in there in, in OBS catches up so when I press stop to stop recording this I've got to make sure that it doesn't stop it early because I, when I click stop it will stop straight away and that will cut off the last couple of seconds of the footage so I need to wait 